Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you to the HSRC for inviting me to be part of this event. I uh, will um, take it that protocol has, has been observed, and I will just go straight into uh, giving my talk. I've titled my paper, um, it's very short, um, but briefly, the place of AI in responding to the inequality and inequity of women. So today I want to invite you to think along with me as I note a few concerns that relate to women, inequity and AI. The technological uh, development in AI has generally been met with celebration and awe, but there's also been some trepidation about the advent of AI. The one obvious worry about AI relates to the increased job losses as, um, as a human workforce is being replaced by machines that can compete or complete tasks faster, more accurately, and at a cheaper rate. This problem of human job loss still affects women more than it does men. The International Monetary Fund uh, recently reported that in comparison to men, 11% more women have lost their jobs to machines. This is um, this in addition to the fact that the of the gender pay gap that plagues women. Women in South Africa are said to earn roughly 23 to 35% less than their male counterparts. My other concern has to do with the safety of women, particularly in cases of gender-based violence and femicide. Recently, Nosikai Lom Tebeni a young, young woman aged 23 was brutally murdered. Her dismembered remains were found in a purple suitcase at a, corner, at a street corner in Quigney, East London. Nostrello was a student at the University of Fort Hay. Nostrello is one of the many victims of gender-based violence and femicide. And her case, among others, exposes the devaluation and dehumanization of women. Other society, um, our society consistently fails to protect women, even in, a, in the month that is dedicated to celebrating women. It is as though women are not persons. In a paper I wrote on the personhood of women, I argue that society has stripped women of their moral value to a point where they are used as a means to an end and not respected as ends in themselves. We live in a phallocentric society that unjustifiably prioritizes the desires and needs of cisgendered males at the heavy cost of the welfare of women. In such a phallocentric society, what place can we think AI holds in contributing to the equality of women in society? There are two ways in which we can unpack this, and I'm really going to be brief about this. The first way is that we can think of AI as a tool that humans can use to affect change in different sectors in society. We could use it to respond to problems in the workplace. We could use it to address the gender pay gap, for instance. Perhaps a techno genius could develop a system that analyzes the reasons for such pay gaps and adjust them accordingly in a way that is fair and reflective of an institutional culture of equity. However, this would require those in high places to buy into equal pay across gender lines. And I think we all know, given the power dynamics in society, that this is not, um, we're not close to having such alignment to equity in the gender pay gap. Secondly, another way in which um, we could think about the place of AI in empowering women involves us thinking of AI as completely autonomous agents capable of understanding social norms and political complexities within society. In this way, AI would be, in, would be thought of as independent agents who can understand the value of women and, pre and prevent gruesome violations against women such as Nostrelum Tebin. Herein, we would have to, I think, wait for the success of advanced machine learning that would advance, that would result in the cognitive and emotional intelligence of machines. I say this because in understanding or the, play, um, the process of understanding social norms um, involves learning. And in most instances in work on personhood or African communitarian um, ideals of personhood, it has been a common argument that our understanding of social norms is something that is learned over time. So um, I do think that this one would have to wait for advanced machine learning processes. To close off, um, Bill Hooks, who is a feminist, Afro-feminist scholar, rightly points out that sexism, classism, 
and racisms are problem racism are problems that uh, plague the lived experience of women in our society. Herein, she doesn't only blame men for such uh, ills against women, but she also blames or points out that we have female male apologists. And if we go with the idea that AI can be helpful in dealing with sexism, classism, and racism, we'd have to probably go with um, the second way of thinking of AI, which is thinking of them as autonomous agents capable of understanding social norms. Drusilla Cornell calls for an imaginary domain that is devoid of, of inequity as necessary to address the above mentioned problem. In this uh, imaginary domain that Cornell speaks about, we would have men and women entering society as equals with nobody being given an advantage either in terms of race or class or even um, gender. What we need is to think about how artificial intelligence can contribute to the creation of such an imaginary domain with the deontological core of women would be valued and respected so as to prevent their dehumanization and to de-superiorize the place of men in society. Thank you.